Welcome to EOZ TV. I'm Elder. I'm uh, Mrs. Elder. And tonight, by request from Mrs. Elder. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> I insist. She insisted. Uh, Mrs. Elder had the idea of, instead of me getting into all of these interviews that I've been doing, she, she loves the interviews, but um, they were getting, sometimes it's a little bit too much inside baseball. They get a little bit too geeky and a little bit too involved for the people that really understand. we got to go over basics. Yeah, what yeah. is this? i got to learn how to play baseball first. Right, yeah, okay. She, needs, she wants to learn where the bases are. So the, It's not that I don't yeah. know. Okay. I want to make sure that we're conveying this information so that more people can join in and see how it impacts them. It makes sense. Uh, we, uh, it makes sense to be able to. We have these... Uh, we have the ability to do videos, and why not make um, some basic information available for people? That they I, I, I just don't think that people understand the association by certain terror groups and how it impacts our daily lives. And so what I'm hoping, mm -hmm. I'm hoping, Elder, yes, yes. I am hoping that you're going to be bringing it and you're going to be explaining what these factions are how they have a repercussion on everybody. And we got to spread the word because people do not realize they're supporting terrorism. We need to stop it. Okay. We will give it so a shot. So you give it your best. Okay. I will give Explain it a shot. Explain it to me. I will try. You can ask questions. And anybody else can ask questions as well in the chat. And uh, I will try to answer it. I'm not going to say I'm the world's biggest expert on... You don't have to be the world's biggest expert. Yeah. We just got to get the information over. Okay. We will try. Um, I'm being a little animated. Continue. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> um, the Palestinian Arab terror groups. A short introduction. You have to start with Fatah. And why are we starting with Fatah? Fatah is the group that was founded by Yasser Arafat. Well, of course. And um, it is really, although there were some groups beforehand that were sponsored by... Um, you know, by Arab countries and other things, and they were the, like they pretended to be, you know, Palestinian groups, but they really were fronts for the Arab countries like Syria and Egypt to do their stuff. Fatah was probably the first terror group that was actually created by Palestinians, and it was Yasser Arafat as well as a few other people. I remember that era quite well. Abu Jihad. It was founded around, according to different people, but a, most people seem to think it was founded around 1959 by Yasser Arafat. Their first terror attack was in 1964. Um, it was uh, against the uh, Israel's water carrier. They tried to actually sabotage Israel's water supply. Do you remember how they were able to tell and see what was going on? Um, I don't know if you do, but... No, I don't know the specific. I mean, they tried to do it, but it wasn't successful. They tried to bomb the water carrier on January 1st, 1964. Um, it, was, it was not... Or was it 65? Might have been 65. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It was 65. And, uh, but, you know, it was not successful. But uh, after that, they were able to do some low-level um, terror attacks in Israel, you know, infiltrating the border from Jordan, which is where they were mostly um, based at that time. Now, Fatah, which is, um, uh, it means opening, but it also means, like, revolution, a whole bunch of other stuff. It has different meanings depending on how you do it. They are um, both... A, Officially, they're sort of a secular group, but they, Arafat was brilliant at being able to play both sides against whoever. So when it was when it helped him to be able to pretend to be a Muslim religious Muslim group, a jihadist, he would mention the word jihad all the time, even though. But but when he spoke to the West, he would say, "No, it's a Western group. He wants to have a democratic state." He would say whatever people needed or whatever people wanted to hear is what he was good at. Um, so what happened was Fatah, people get mixed up to it. What's Fatah? What's the PLO? Yeah, so let's go into it. We are going to go into it. So the next slide will be the PLO, but the, the important thing for now is that Fatah took over the PLO in 1967. Um, essentially, it was the PLO was, was another group um, that was also run pretty much by the different Arab nations. It was headed by somebody named Ahmed Shukeri. Um, but after the 67 war, um, it pretty much went on bad times. Nobody really wanted to deal with it. They were all embarrassed because they were all embarrassed that they lost the war, and that part of them blamed the, you know, the PLO as well. So Arafat took that opportunity to essentially dominate the PLO with his Fatah um, faction, which pretty much became not exactly the same since then, but very close to it. Okay. okay. So then, um, there, as I said, they were pretty much based in Jordan um, from uh, when they were from there were when they were made. I mean, I, uh, not when he started, but it was uh, that was pretty much during the time of the '60s. They were based out of Jordan, but uh, when the airplane hijacking started, and then they started getting too big ahead, they essentially tried to take over Jordan. Jordan's King Hussein didn't like that. Um, they, in what was known as Black September, he killed thousands 
of them, mm -hmm. which is something, again, nobody really talks about nowadays, because when Arabs kill Arabs, nobody really cares. But he killed, you know, 3,500, something like that. And it is, um, but, uh, and then because of that, and then they were kicked out and they went to Lebanon. Okay. Uh, kicked them out and go to Lebanon. It created, sort of, at least uh, nominally, it created something called the Black September Group. Which was uh, like they, they made like an offshoot terror group, but the fact is, Fatah and Black September were the same thing. Uh, the Arafat knew what was going on. They used it as an excuse whenever there were terror attacks later. Fatah would say, "Oh, it's Black September. It's not us. They're liars." Okay. Um, the Black September group were the people that were behind the Munich Olympics massacre in 1972, and there were lots of airplane hijackings that were done by Black September as well, as well as other um, Palestinian factions. Okay. Um. Fatah was active in the Second Intifada. It, uh, they, were, they participated in suicide bombings and other attacks on Jews. This is after the supposed peace treaty of Oslo. Um, it's interesting because, again, to, to understand the relationship, and we'll talk about it in the next slide with the PLO, but the, it's, uh, the PLO is dominated by Fatah. Fatah is a, a, ostensibly a political group, even though it isn't. It's mm -hmm. a terror group. But it's um, but it but it has and all of the groups that we're going to talk about today have both a um, what they call both a political and a military wing, mm -hmm. but they're the same thing. You know, there's really no difference. But for the West, they they pretend all of that stuff. Um, somebody was just saying he thought Shakira was still the head of the PLO in '67. Um, yeah, it was '68. It was '68 that Arafat took over. Um, so yeah, Fatah officially is a political party. Um, I could tell you that in the 2009 platform, which is still in effect, it officially still supports terror. Okay. It's okay. It says, Fatah adheres to the right of the Palestinian people to resist the occupation by all legitimate means, including the right to use armed struggle, which means they can, that's just key code words for terror attacks. When it says armed struggle, it's terror attacks. Now, here's the weird thing about it, and the people don't really quite get it. The head of Fatah is Mahmoud Abbas. It used to be Arafat after he died. Mahmoud Abbas is the head of Fatah political party. I, I actually knew that. I don't okay. understand why people don't understand that. Is okay, it? but here's the point. Mahmoud Abbas is also the head of the PLO. Mm -hmm. He's also the head of the Palestinian Authority. Mm -hmm. He's also the head of something called the State of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when he talks to Westerners, he says, oh, I'm, the, I'm a political, I'm a leader of a country, I'm a leader of a state, the State of Palestine. And nobody really talks to him. Well, you're also the head of Fatah. Fatah says you, and, and as, the, as the head of the state of Palestine, he says, oh, I've, get, I've gotten rid of terror. We don't support terror. We don't support violence anymore. Mm -hmm. But as the head of Fatah, he still does. So he, again, he's learned the lesson from Arafat of talking out of both sides of his mouth. Seems to be the way it is. Anyway, continue. Yes, there are terror groups that report to Fatah. Okay. And this is not an exhaustive list by any means. There is something called, or I'm not sure if they're still around, but called Al Asifa. Um, they were um, they were ones that, they were the first ones that did the attacks on Israel in 1965 that I mentioned. Um, they were responsible for the Coastal Road massacre, um, which had uh, this woman named Alal Magrabi was one of, was the architect of it. They came over from Lebanon. It killed 38 people, including 13 children. Alal Magrabi is still a hero to the PLO and to Fatah. So the Palestinians. That, that, that follow Mahmoud Abbas still consider her a hero. Um, there's a group called Tanzim that Arafat founded officially to like kill collaborators, actually. Okay. That's when he founded it in 1995. But it's also been involved in suicide bombings. Haven't heard quite as much about them lately. Okay. And the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, um, also directly founded, directly created by Arafat, um, and they were responsible for many of the terror attacks in, during the Second Intifada in the, in the 2000s. It was supposedly dismantled. Um, you know, Israel made a deal with them in which um, they said, you know, in response for, you know, you guys to dismantle yourselves, we'll let you become part of Arafat's police. Um, but it still exists. Okay. Um, they, there's lots of splinter groups of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades. But they all directly identify with Fatah. They, as far as I know, all of them still pledge allegiance to Mahmoud Abbas. Okay. And they're still around, even though they're supposedly, you know, they should have been dismantled um, 13 years ago. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the PLO. Yeah, let's talk about the PLO. Okay. The, um, as I mentioned, it was, uh, it was founded in 1964 by the Arab League. Okay. okay. So there was, it was, that was, the Arab League said, we need somebody to represent the Palestinians. So that's what it was meant for. 
It was taken over, as I mentioned, in 1968 by Arafat and Fatah after the Six-Day War. Um, this is important. In 1974, Arafat uh, presented this 10-point plan that's known as the Phased Plan to destroy Israel. The Phased Plan essentially, and again, there's a, there's a bunch of to it, but the main part is saying, we'll do whatever we can in order to take over land. Mm -hmm. We're never going to concede anything. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we have land, we're going to use that as a base in order to be able to do more attacks on Israel. Now, here's the thing. Nobody's ever repudiated the phased plan, mm -hmm. even though Arafat in 1993, when he started the Oslo process, said that he repudiated terror. He clearly didn't because the Second Intifada showed that he was lying about that. Um, however, the um, if you look at everything that was ever done by Arafat, as well as anything that was ever done by Mahmoud Abbas, everything is consistent with this phased plan mm -hmm. to destroy Israel. There's nothing inconsistent about it. The only thing that's slightly different is they're, you, they're including diplomacy as a means to get land. Okay. But if you look at all the negotiations, all of the the, the things that you know that Arafat and the Mahmoud Abbas said no to, all of the uh, you know they never gave a counteroffer, all the things that they rejected, um, nothing was inconsistent with this phased plan to destroy Israel. Okay. They all insist on oh we have to have the Palestinians have to have the right to return, which is a means to destroy Israel. They all insisted that uh, they, you know, one of the things that Israel always wanted in any peace plan is we will declare the conflict to be over. You know, once we have this peace plan, that's it. You don't have any more claims on us. And that was the thing that Arafat just couldn't do. He but just he, he wouldn't wanted. Let it go. He said he because according to the phase plan, that it's not going to be over. It's going to stay on forever. He also insisted on saying like even if the right of return, even if there was, you know, and, and other people have said this also, even if you know Israel. Uh, um, admitted, you know, or said that, okay, we, we agreed that we had some responsibility for the refugee problem and uh, we'll pay money in order to get rid of it or something like that, um, the PLO has said, we're still not going to accept it because we want individuals to still have the ability to sue and to be able to claim for it. In other words, it's never going to end. The war will never end. This is what the PLO has been like, and this is what... Um, it's been going on it's for going quite on. some time. Now, what, like, uh, so when he really took over, you're saying it's 1967? Um, he took over the PLO in 68, yes. Okay, and so since 68, he commissioned that it would never stop. Pretty much. Well, 674 was when he made it official, and nothing ever took, took that away. Like the 1968 charter, which also was said a lot of stuff against Israel. You know, it said, you know, hey, Israel must be destroyed. It's by, 46 uh, years already. It's uh, more than that. Okay, well, uh, well, I don't know since, how to add. Oh, since 74 was is 46 years, yes. Okay, um, continue. So the 68 charter, um, there was a big, uh, he made a big deal with Bill Clinton, and he said, oh, the parts of the charter that say to destroy Israel, we're going to have a vote, but they didn't. So they had like a, you know, a, a roll, not even a roll call, you know, people raised their hands. But that's not the way the PLO has, even though it's a terror organization, it has very specific set of bylaws and how they do their, you know, how terrorism? things can be changed. No, not even terrorism. <laughs> Sorry. But how they could, uh, you know, how they do their, um, you know, their political stuff. And that's not the way, according to the PLO, to change the charter. And the other way to know that the charter was never changed is they never released a new charter. You know, they only had this one. They just said, oh, well, those, those specific paragraphs don't apply anymore. But they never came up with a new one without those paragraphs. They never and, committed to anything and understanding by this. Relatively recently, I haven't looked lately, but certainly within the past few years, if you would go to the um, you know, various PLO websites, the 1968 charter was the one that was still there. You know, so that, that was a complete scam that, again, the world really, really wanting peace believed all of this. Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's been a scam the entire time. Absolutely. So the question is, is that I know the scam isn't going to end, but that's why I want to educate people. So please continue. Okay, very good. Um, so as I said, they pretended to renounce terror. This is what I just mentioned in 1993. Slow down, please. Okay. <laughs> so they, they, as I said, they pretended to say they were doing no terror. There was the letter that... Um, that Arafat wrote to Yitzhak Rabin saying that, you know, from now on, we are, uh, we're going to do anything with diplomacy. And of course, after um, they didn't get what they wanted from, which is pretty much Israel's surrender in Camp David and in, the, in Taba from the Clinton uh, parameters, the, um, they launched the second intifada and they clearly were behind it. Again, for a while, Arafat pretended that he wasn't, you know, Involved. that it was other groups, yep, but, yep, yep. but he was, and we all know he was. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things, um, you know, George Bush, um, George W. Bush, was uh, sort of like, he was like sort of sympathetic to Arafat until 
uh, there was a ship, a weapons ship called the Kareen A that Israel intercepted, filled with weapons for, for the PLO, and Israel had all of the records, of all of the manifests, all of the paperwork that was on it that showed it with, with Arafat's signature. They, showed, they went to Bush and they showed, here's who it is, and Bush was upset. And uh, since then, he, had, he wanted nothing to do with Arafat anymore. He gave him no respect whatsoever. It's too bad that other um, world leaders haven't learned the same lesson. I know. So let's educate them and get it back right up there where it should be. Let's go. Keep going. Okay. Um, so right now, so you also have to keep in mind that the PLO controls the Palestinian Authority. People think that, you know, well, even though there obviously haven't been any elections since uh, 2008, um, or 2007, that people still think that the Palestinian Authority are the people that actually rule and, and that are in control. No, they're not. The Palestinian Authority reports to the PLO. The PLO is not a democratic organization. Palestinian Authority is pretty much I just a shell. That. I just don't know why the rest of the world doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. So, and so now there's something called the State of Palestine. And again, they, they change whatever their definition is to whoever they're speaking to. So the, is the State of Palestine what came after the PLO or after the Palestinian Authority? It looks like they're saying that it came after the Palestinian Authority, but at the UN, for example, it was always the PLO that was the representative at the UN, and now they put it, the word State of Palestine there. So they just use whatever words they need to use in, in order, order to, to, deflect. to get whatever they, you know, in order to get whatever they need done uh, at any point. Okay. Um, so it, 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 the PLO is dominated by Fatah, but it does include some smaller groups, some okay. other, other terror groups. Actually. Educate me. We'll get there. I know. Okay. I know. Hamas, the other biggie. Um, again, Hamas has a the um, the Al Qassam brigades. Hamas is what it would call its political um, part, and the um, Al Qassam brigades is what they call its military part. But they're the same thing. Did you see that question? Yes, I, I, I answered it. Oh, my apologies. Okay. <laughs> okay. Continue. I just interrupted. Okay. So Hamas was founded in 1987. It's, it was essentially a branch of the of the Muslim Brotherhood, which was based out of Egypt. Um, Al Qaeda, by the way, was also a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. The, the same sort of thing. But it, the main difference between Hamas and the PLO is that it's Islamist. Okay, it's a it's a humor me. Tell me what that means. It means that it is. They want you know they they try to base everything on Islamic law. Mm -hmm. They they're doing everything from a religious perspective. There's nothing secular about it. Mm -hmm. They want a religious state to replace Israel as well as the PLO or the Palestinian part. Everything they want it to be. Not only do they want it, and I have, to, I have to look this up to verify this, but if, as I recall, not only do they want it to be a single Muslim state in that you know in what what they call Palestine, they want it to be part of a caliphate. Okay. They want it to be part of a huge Islamic ummah, which is very funny when you think about it, because they say, oh, we want independence, 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 but they what they be... really want is they want to be part <laughs> of this gigantic. So they don't want a separate independent Palestine, if you ask them uh, in the right way. Uh, Hamas also does something very interesting and it's very effective, which is that they're not only the terror organization, not only the political, but they also have a charity wing. They're very big on giving, um, and they're and they're better at it than the, than the than the PLO is. So they're very good at at providing food and and you know other things to poor people, and so that, that they gets join them. In. So they join I mean, right. It helps them to join in. It helps them feel loyal to the to Hamas. And also, it just gives goodwill. You know, the people that are around think, oh, these, these are good guys, therefore they want to join. It's, a, uh, it's an extremely effective thing, which, again, the other Muslim Brotherhood groups did as well. So their goal, as I said, is to replace Israel with an Islamist state, at least as, um, as, as phase one, and the caliphate is phase two. They're responsible for scores of deadly attacks, okay, starting from, you know, from when they were founded. Mm -hmm. they, were, they, they were doing attacks during Oslo. Um, during the Oslo process, the PLO sort of stayed away from it, but Hamas was happy to. And it was part of it was like, you know, Arafat knew about this. I mean, and he, he, he was friends with, uh, with the founder of Hamas. Um, so I said they're frenemies with Fatah. <laughs> they were, um, you know, they were, at the, you know, at times they've been friends with them. At times they worked with them. At the moment, they're pretty much enemies. Um, because Hamas took over Gaza in 2007 after that... Uh, after that election, and there was a bloody split with Fatah because actually Hamas won the election. Um, Fatah said, we're not, we're not thrilled with those results. Of course, the rest of the world said the same thing. Nobody wanted Hamas to be in charge. So they, uh, Hamas essentially did a bloody coup in, um, in Gaza in 2007. 
uh, killed a number of uh, of their fellow Palestinians from Fatah. How sweet they are! And they uh, and that was it, and they took over. Um, so since then, there's been essentially two Palestinian political entities: um, one in Gaza, one in what's called the West Bank. Okay. Which and then the West Bank obviously is uh, from Fatah dominated, and Gaza is uh, been dominated by Hamas. Hamas. Okay. They've been trying different things, like you know, Fatah has. Uh, tried to start, you know, because Fatah still provides money and aid to Gaza because it's still part of so-called Palestine. And um, so Hamas takes that money, but Fatah has very often um, blocked medicines, they've blocked um, electricity, you know, the, and they've asked Israel and to turn pro- off the electricity and stuff like that. And Hamas lies too, because they'll say, you know, I think the Hamas exaggerates sometimes about the medicines. It's hard to know what their truth is, but the truth is they're, they're, they're not, you know, they're not fans of each other at the moment. Okay. Um, but here you see they, when they were, this is Arafat and the founder of Hamas, um, Sheikh Yassin, who was, uh, in a wheelchair and Israel took care of him. Mm-hmm. Islamic Jihad is the other major terror group in this area. Okay. Um, their military wing is called the Al-Quds Brigades. The, um, it was formed in 1981, so they're before Hamas, actually. They were around a while. Um, the first Palestinian suicide attack, this was not a bombing, but it was the first suicide attack, um, was in 1989, in which an Islamic Jihad terrorist went on a bus from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. If you've ever done the ride, um, you know that there are certain places that there are very high cliffs mm-hmm. um, that are a little bit scary to drive, actually. And um, he essentially took, waited for one of those things, grabbed the wheel of the bus, and uh, wrenched the wheel towards the cliff, and the bus went over the cliff. Uh, 16 people were killed, about 27 injured. Unfortunately, the, uh, the person who did the suicide attack was not killed. Even more unfortunately, and I just found this out when I was researching this, they actually traded him as one of the people in the Gilad Shalit deal. Oh, you're kidding me. No. He was a, he's oh, out, that's a shame. He's out free at the moment, the guy that did this, which is like, I didn't think that they were going to be, you know, having these people with blood on their hands out. So it's a, sure in they retrospect, are. is a really, really, really bad deal. Um, so it's considered more extreme than Koch Hamas, but today more, they generally cooperate today. But, in fact, last year there was a bit flare-up in Gaza, which was pretty much only to Islamic Jihad, Israel, and Israel kept the targets to Islamic Jihad, which was interesting. But um, but they uh, they also do a good cop, bad cop thing. You'll see a lot of these groups are doing good cop, cop bad cop things, mm-hmm. in which they say that, um, you know, okay, I'm not going to be, I'll be adhering to the agreements, to ceasefire, but this other group I don't have control over, you know. So Hamas tries to play that game, Israel tries not to play that game, um, at the moment, you know, things are, uh, they pretty much cooperate. Even though Islamic Jihad is a Sunni organization, it's funded by Iran. Now, again, as a basic fact, you need to understand there are two major Muslim sects. There's more than that, but there's two major ones. One's the Sunnis, one's the Shiites. Okay. The Shiites are dominated by Iran. Okay. And uh, the Sunnis are pretty much everybody else. Not completely, but pretty much everybody else. I mean, you All know, right. there there are Shiites in in you know in Bahrain and in Yemen and in Iraq, but it's it's mostly Sunni. The um, but even and then they can't stand each other. They really Sunnis and Shiites really hate each other, All and, right. and they have from the very beginning, which is like in the year 700 or so. But Okay. Um, but Islamic Jihad is is like friendly with the with the Shiites because Islamic Jihad gets its money. Everything comes down to money. Islamic Jihad gets its money from Hezbollah, and uh, so there and and Hezbollah of course tells them what to do. So like even if Hamas wouldn't want to attack Israel, if it's in Iran's interest to do it, they tell them, hey, you better do it, and and they pretty much cooperate with them. Okay. <clears throat> um, and Islamic Jihad also has a fairly sophisticated news. And propaganda organization. They make videos that are that are relatively professional. Their news is is among the best and most reliable sources of news that you can find in Arabic, which is very strange. The reason that is is. is because Fatah is trying to twist everything against Hamas. Hamas is trying to twist everything against Fatah, <laughs> and Islamic Jihad is sort of like, well, here's what's really going on. You know, it's obviously they're not going to say anything bad about themselves, but they're not as big a player. So it's very interesting. I'd say. The popular front for the liberation of Palestine, and whose terror group is known as the Ali Mustafa Brigades. This is really fascinating. 
Um, it was founded in 67. It's a Marxist-Leninist revolutionary socialist group. So these guys are socialists. Okay. They are not... They're very staunchly secular, okay? They're, the PLO tries to shroud the line. Hamas and Islamic Jihad try to be Islamist. But the PFLP is completely socialist, okay. which makes things interesting. First of all, they, oh, they were the they pioneers. Were the ones who did the, They're uh, the first ones that did the, the airplane hijackings on behalf of the, I believe, 68 was the first year for that. Okay. But here's the interesting thing. They, since they're socialists, they're really big on this whole human rights thing. In other words, the whole But do they stem, actually really need it? Of course not. So these human rights NGOs that are Palestinian NGOs, Adamir, which says that they help Palestinians with legal issues, um, the PCH, or Palestinian, the Palestinian um, Committee for Human Rights, I forgot what the C stands for. That's okay. DCIP, um, Defense for Children International Palestine. These are groups that are respected in the West. Okay, they get quoted. Adamir is the people that came up, they're the people that came up with the quote saying that there have been 800,000 Palestinians imprisoned right. since 1967. A completely made up number. But the number's been quoted by Jimmy Carter, by the UN, by Time Magazine. All these guys have quoted it, and it's completely made up. The PFLP, it really, it's as a socialist thing, and they learned very well from their, so, you know, the, from the Soviets. They are masters of propaganda. And the propaganda nowadays is using human rights against Israel, pretending to be for human rights and going again, going after Israel from that perspective. The PFLP are masters of this. So uh, the so DCIP is Defense for Children International. They uh, they claim that they really uh, you know that they're and they'll put out all of these reports about how Israel is terrible to children. And the reports And it's are, all a lie. There are there there sometimes will have it hang a tiny bit of the truth on them because it's going because nobody's going to really check it out. But I've just looked at it. In other words, they would say, "Oh, here are all the children that were killed by Israel," you know, in in, in during a war, during one of the Gaza wars. And I looked them up, and a lot of them were like, you know, seventeen-year-old terrorists that were, you know, were buried with full Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad uh, ceremonies. <clears throat> they were literally terrorists. <clears throat> it's too bad that you know we can't get to the point where you bring that in and you show the correlation so it can actually be brought to life here's who they're saying is a child right, and here's yeah. this child who's an actual terrorist. I, I have done that i have i certainly no, have, i know uh, you've done it but yeah. what i'm saying to you is tie it back into these things continue you're doing great okay. <laughs> keep going <laughs> um so like in 2019 there was a, a 17 year old girl who was um taking a hike in in uh i I forgot it. I think it was the. I forgot it was Israel. Which side of the green line she was on? She was murdered. She was murdered by the PFLP. And the people that were involved in the murder worked for these these NGOs that are funded by Europe. So only recently has this um, started to get the attention. I mean, Israel started to really lobby Europe, saying, "Hey, what's going on over here?" So only this past week there was a, a magazine article in a German, a major German newspaper, Bild in which um, they went through this whole thing and they said, you know, the people from Adamir and from this were actually involved in the murder. Right. So these are and literally so they're starting terrorists. To get, they're, they're starting to get it. They're starting to get it. In Europe, they're just starting but to. But that's the whole purpose of why we're doing this tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry. This okay. is what I need to bring up. <laughs> okay. Fundamentals. Right. Um, the problem is that, you know, we've seen Europe sometimes got things in the past too. And then, you know, uh, there's so much... They don't want to believe it. So, you know, a year later, two years later, they say, oh, everything's been fixed. You know, everything, I understand you know, it that, happens. But the point is, is that, like, the more that we educate people, the more everybody else can help us make that happen. I hope so. Okay, continue. Okay, this is a relatively minor one, but the only reason I'm mentioning it, the Army of Islam, they're essentially a, uh, they're a Salafist group. There's a third, uh, besides the Shiites and the, and the uh, Sunnis, there's Salafists. Um, they don't think Hamas is extreme enough, so every, every once in a while they'll start... Uh, stirring things up they are linked to al-qaeda so there are you know there are links to al-qaeda directly okay. in gaza but again it's a relatively small group uh, but they have been involved in several kidnappings there was a bbc reporter that they kidnapped and it looked like they were involved in the gilat shalit kidnapping as well it looks like they cooperated with hamas in that time okay but they're again a relatively minor group but every once in a while they'll start and they'll start fighting hamas too you know when they think that hamas is okay so you'll keep bringing them out so that again we get a hang of this Okay, these are just, uh, and I'm not, they're not so important nowadays as they were, but along with, you know, in the 60s when the PFLP came out, there was also the DFLP, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and there was an offshoot of the PFLP called the PFLPGC, General Command. They're also, you know, 
They were um, they all of these are part of the PLO, like I mentioned before. Okay. That they are, uh, you know, but the PLO is dominated by Fatah, but um, they're part of it as well, and they're just sort of like sitting in the sidelines again. They're they're secular socialist groups, but they're also terror groups. I mean, look at the, uh, you can see their guns and, and everything on their uh, sure and their logos. They are more active in Syria. Syria has always been a socialist state, so um, they've that was always been a more welcoming place for the for these socialist groups. They haven't done as much recently. Finally, we we'll talk Hezbollah. about Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Um, Hezbollah is not really a Palestinian terror group, so strictly speaking, it doesn't belong here. But it does because it's important to understand how it fits in with everything else. Okay. So, and this is my last slide, by the way. But um, it was founded in the 1980s when Israel was uh, pretty much stuck in Lebanon in the uh, in that very long uh, Lebanon war. Um, they were, but Hezbollah is completely funded by and loyal to Iran, and they pretty much have, and they're Shiite, as I mentioned, they're Shiite Muslim. Okay. Um, uh, Lebanon is like divided roughly into thirds, even though it's not true anymore. But a third Shiite, a third Sunni, and a third Christian. Okay. Um, the although there's plenty of Druze and the Christians have all run away, but um, in reality. Um, Hezbollah has pretty much taken over Lebanon as mm -hmm. uh, you know, or if nothing else, they have veto power over anything happening in Lebanon. Okay. Um, there's a, like today the head of Hezbollah did like a two and a half hour speech just talking about how Israel is going to go down the drain. Um, they have a huge arsenal of rockets. I mean, Hamas is, is has plenty, but Hezbollah has the last number I've seen is like 180 thousand, and these are much more sophisticated rockets. Than what you know, than what Hamas has, they can reach anywhere in Israel. They are provided by Iran. Um, Iran regularly sends these very sophisticated rockets to Lebanon. Israel, whenever they find out about it, and they find out about it often, they bomb the shipments. Mm -hmm. So there's been hundreds of times that Israel has tried to stop this. I have no idea what came through. I know they're also working on building their own um, in Lebanon, mm -hmm. but um, but they're essentially, um, you know, they've took up, and again, and, and, and the people in Lebanon aren't happy that their, their country has been taken over by effectively Iran. I mean, the head of, 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 of Hezbollah, um, Nasrallah is, uh, he doesn't even make any bones about it. You know, he, he's, he's loyal to Iran more than he's loyal to Lebanon. And, but they're so powerful, Lebanon can't do anything about it at this time. The Hezbollah, Armed forces are more powerful than the Lebanese army. So it's like, this is stuck. And they are in the south part of Lebanon, of course, the part that's near Israel. Okay. They're dedicated, as I said, to destroying Israel. I they, think they uh, all are. Yeah, they all are. <laughs> they definitely are. But, you know, Hezbollah said, you know, even today, in that speech by Nasrallah, he said that, um, you know, the Jews are going to have to go. You know, he said he's ready to kick the Jews out of, uh, he said, you know, they're going to have to go back to where they came from. Um, and again, it's a key part of the Iranian strategy. Iran, Iran wants Gaza to be controlled by Iranian money. They already control Hezbollah. They've essentially taken over Syria. Okay. So with the exception of the Jordanian border, you know, Iran has managed to surround Israel. And, uh, and that's what they've been trying to do. They do everything through proxies. Um, so they don't, you know, Iran doesn't want to attack Israel directly. But they want to say, you know, and that's what they've been doing. You know, they'll use the Hezbollah hasn't attacked Israel in a while, but um, but they'll use them and say, you know, you attack because Israel will, will retaliate against you and not against us. I'm not sure if Israel's going to do that anymore, and I think that's probably one of the reasons there haven't been any attacks lately. But um, but that's pretty much it. Okay, but hang on a second. Yes. So you've given an overview yes. of all of these terrorist groups. Yes. Okay, and I know that we're short on time, that we have to keep them small at chunks. Yes. Would it be okay with you, and I know I'm catching you hot off the, the <laughs> spot here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what I'd like to do is, mm. number one, the uh, strategic minister of affairs put something out like terrorist in suits, and what they yeah. did is they have Hezbollah, mm. and then they show the actual people and the groups and the terrorist um, things that they did. I'd like to go to the next level with this and mm -hmm. maybe do the next show mm -hmm. where we're showing actual things that people can relate to and, and, and see the destruction and seeing if we can't just really drive this home. The Terrorist in Suits campaign, um, which is a very good campaign, but if you look at it, it's like 80 or 90% is the PFLP. 
That's really oh, is that right? a, yeah, from eighty. It's almost why, all why, PFLP. Why do you think? Why do you think? Because that... the PFLP knows how to play the, ah, the, so the, the human marketing. rights game, right? Ah. They know how to play the human rights game. So that's really there are a couple here and there where the other people, because you listen, Palestinians need jobs. They'll grab it with any NGO they want. But the PFLP owns these NGOs. They're like the head I guys hear what you're of saying. these and NGOs. So that's how they're being so successful yes. at doing their marketing. Yes. So here's my request. Yes. Okay. I love the fact that you were able to lay out a little bit of history about each one of these groups. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is drive home the terror that they did. Like if we can associate what actual terror they did and bring back to home to people, okay, even though you're saying it on a generic level, mm -hmm. actually go into specific incidences. Well, I did actually a few of them. I, I didn't said say, no, 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 <laughs> I, I didn't say that you didn't. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is I'd like to go into it just a little bit more and drive it home a little bit. Okay. Well, I didn't prepare photos this time. And I'm no, not I understand. Right now. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do that. That's okay. what I'm saying to you. If it's okay, I'd like to do a part two of this. Would that be okay with you? I will consider it. I appreciate okay. that you would consider it. <laughs> it's, we will see about that. No, but, but what I'm saying to you is I find this to be very effective. Mm -hmm. And like I said to you, it sounds crazy. Real fundamentals, I don't think that everybody really gets who, what group, why, and why it's so dangerous. And everybody doesn't realize that it's affecting even the American politics. It's affecting everywhere in the world. And just having real fundamental information helps people understand how this is all put together. Okay, and so with your expertise, you can help bring that forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as much of an expert on it, but there certainly has been historically these groups have allied with other terror groups. Yeah. You know, like the Japanese Red Army did a terror attack in Israel because they were allied with, I think it was the PLO. I don't remember which one it was. Actually, it was Red Army. It was probably one of the one of the socialist groups. And um, there have been other ones. I mean, you know, there was uh, the um, the Mike's Place bombing was done by some British um, people, oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, but they were just, you know, they were... But everybody worried. seems to align to think it's okay to do terrorism on Israel. It's not it's okay. obviously not, but uh, but they think it is, and then and they justify it. I mean, these people that are on the left will justify it today. They are going to say, you know, oh, it's legitimate resistance. A hundred percent, and that's what I'm saying to you, is that that's the whole point of doing this, is that educating people on the other side and saying, listen, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And just even giving the fundamentals out is much appreciated. And that's okay. what I asked you to do, and I do appreciate that you um, brought this okay. to the table. I can work on that. Well, okay. I really appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, we are over time, so, and this actually took longer than I expected, but it's interesting. But at any rate, um, for now, I'm Elder. I'm Mrs. Elder. <laughs> Thank you very much. And again, if uh, anybody that wants to uh, donate so we can continue do doing these sort of things, the, um, there's the PayPal button and the Patreon button on the Elder of Zion website. So we are always appreciative of that sort of thing. And stay involved. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much.